this is my family and I come here about a week ago. Um, I usually come here every weekend and I bring my family out here to do possum trapping because I'm permitted for it. Um, up at this hut here which is the Macintosh. It's a two hour walk up there and back so yeah it's a good walk for the kids. We do it because of nature. I'm teaching my kids how to respect nature and um, basically possum trapping and all that sort of stuff and, and they earn their pocket money by doing that. Okay so what you've got here is these are all your roads um, that lead around the forest um, and we're here so they've done basically this area here and not the outer edge which is your more dense country like you, yeah, you there's more bush and stuff they've done um mainly where people are going to come in i'd ask doc is it safe for me and my kids to go up to the hut and do trapping she said yes and then i drove in here um got to this area here and noticed the sign um i still thought it was okay so i carried on with my family um it's right here and that's when on the side of the track on the right hand side I seen a possum with its baby um, so I carried on a little bit further to see if there's any more dead carcasses it turns out there wasn't but the minute I stopped is the minute I found it hard to breathe my kids turned around and said to me mum I can't breathe properly I said okay we we need to turn back and I instantly turned back I started walking because we got as far as the look out and we turned around that was it I I didn't want to put my kids in any more dangerous than what we already had um, so I walked back to the car I flushed their mouths um, their mouths first because um, I thought there might have been residue on their mouths because it hadn't been raining um, and also there was there was a little bit of wind so what dust particles were lying around they would have been in our faces on our hair um, on our body somehow and so that's why I made them flush their mouths because I didn't want it getting inside their mouths. We discovered dust and fragments were enough to blow across an area and kill invertebrates down on the ground months afterwards. Has any studies been done on this? Not a one. Research undertaken on aerial, serial bait drops showed that a maximum concentration of 25.2 milligrams of 1080 per square metre was detected in serial bait dust within the control zone, and lower concentrations were found outside treatment areas. There were detectable short-term residues in water, plant, leaf litter and soil samples in two of the three baiting operations. The main conclusion that can be drawn is that dust drift can occur over a considerable distance off site, at least one kilometre. The poison cereal baits used in aerial operations are dyed green and flavoured with cinnamon. As it says here, it only takes four pellets to kill a man, and it says here with first aid treatment you, ca you call a doctor immediately, but we went to the hospital and they couldn't really do anything because they had no test that we could do. The Hawke's Bay District Health Board was asked if there was a test available for people that may have been poisoned with 1080. Their response was, 1080 poison acts rapidly and depending on the dose ingested, symptoms usually occur within 30 minutes of exposure and progress rapidly. If someone is believed to have ingested 1080 but does not get progressively worse, then it is extremely unlikely that they have ingested fluoroacetate. And the District Health Board added, There is some general exposure testing for pest control operators using 1080, and more information can be found at this website. The symptoms are nausea, vomiting, tingling, and numbness in hands and face, and stomach pains and anxiety. Um, they also come with muscular twitching, blurred vision, mental confusion, and leads to coma and convulsions. This lethal dose table, produced by one of the poisoning agencies and Landcare Research, shows that in a standard aerial operation, and with current poison concentrations, there is enough poison bait spread across land and water to kill 23 people per hectare, or over 110 deer, or over 2,500 dogs per hectare. 
In 2015, the Department of Conservation, TB Free and Waikato Regional Council applied to Waikato Regional Council for a joint resource consent to continue eerily spreading 1080 poison across land and water in the Waikato region. As part of the consultation process, the applicants contacted selected agencies and affected parties, including the Waikato District Health Board. The Health Board was asked if it supported the proposal, to which it replied it did. It was asked about perceived benefits, to which it stated it would be a much tidier way of dealing with pest control operations. It was also asked if it had any concerns about the activity, to which it replied it didn't, and it was asked if the board had any other comments it would like to be considered when the decision is made on the proposal, to which it replied no. When aerial operations are undertaken, poison baits are spread across land and directly into waterways in all operations. These documents, named toxin flight charts, are the official GPS recordings showing exactly where the poison baits are spread. This one of the recent Hunua operation shows that the baits were dropped directly into almost all waterways feeding the dams that contain Auckland's water supply. The flight charts of recent drops on the Coromandel Peninsula, Mount Parongia near Hamilton and around Lake Rotopanamu near Lake Taupo all show the baits were dropped directly into all running waterways within the operational areas at the same rate as the land areas around them. No attempt is made to avoid the waterways. By investigating what was happening in water, we discovered that 1080, the poison itself, is it's uptaken. This happens in the water, any dead leaves, uh, any vegetation, uh, the animal life itself, any small animal life there too, also takes up the 1080. The animal life, of course, is, is, is often killed. It's taken up by these plants, by the kura, by the mayfly that was under a rock just there. Any of the animal life, whether it be trout or whatever, that's where your 1080 remains while they tell you that your waterway is completely clear. The New Zealand government-owned poison manufacturer's warning label states, take measures to minimise the chance of baits accidentally entering any body of water and harmful to aquatic organisms. The Waikato Regional Council issues the resource consents that permit the Department of Conservation, TB Free, and its own council to airily spread 1080 poison across land and directly into water within the Waikato region. A requirement of the aerial operations is that landowners and people living immediately adjacent to the boundaries of the operational area are given notice of when the poison will be spread. However, landowners and people not living immediately next to the boundaries but nearby are not notified of what day the aerial operation will be undertaken and many are drawing water without being aware 1080 poison has been dropped directly into it. Beautiful part of the world, isn't it? You're spraying that 1080 poison all across the edge of the farm here. And so, do you draw water from the stream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Department of Conservation, did they uh, provide you with, with any notice that today was the drop and that you should not no, draw nothing, water? Nothing, nothing. And you've heard nothing from the no. Department of Conservation, no. none of the no. operators. There was an aerial drop on Sunday. Uh, were any of you informed by Department of Conservation that the drop was taking place on Sunday? No, none at all. No. no. When Department of Conservation aerially dropped bait up the back of the ranges here, were you informed? No. No, not at all. And and with your water here, you, you're drawing water from the creek, are you? From the Tepuru stream, yes. And uh, during that whole period of time, was it drawing? It would have been on and off, yes. In previous years, have you been informed about the aerial poison drops going on behind here? Not about poison, no. We've been told about flooding and to turn the pumps off so we don't suck the muck into the system, but I've never been told about dropping of poison, no. I think they should tell us or, or, or tell us what to do about it if we don't want it in our water supply.
In February 2016, councillors Clyde Graff and Cathy White presented a recommendation to Waikato Regional Council, stating that the public has a right to know that poison bait is being dropped directly into the water they are drawing for their families and animals. The councillors' recommendations would require the Department of Conservation, TB Free and Waikato Regional Council to include the following wording in all poison drop public notifications. As a result of the aerial operation, 1080 poison bait will be dropped directly into waterways within the operational areas and households living within 3 kilometres of the drop boundaries may be entitled to water mitigation if they request it. Please contact the operation manager for further details. The motion was put and lost, 4 votes to 7. We just want to know the basic facts. When will they be dropped? When do we take our water line out of the river? And how long is the withholding period? So just basic things, you know, all politics aside, but that's the basic information that we want. And we haven't received any of that, no visits, no nothing. Councillors Graff and White met with the Waikato District Health Board's Medical Officers of Health. The councillors raised the concerns of the communities living around the poison drop zones, the recommendations they wanted included in public notifications, and the video evidence that also contained interviews with concerned community members. The Medical Officer of Health responded by email to the issues raised by Councillor Graf and White, which included, I do understand your belief that people have a right to know that 1080 may have been dropped into waterways, regardless of whether there is a risk to their health or not. However, this falls outside of our role, and the purpose of the public health permission being to manage public health risk. In fact, including your proposed wording on notifications could cause unnecessary anxiety to people. In March 2016, the man who threatened to put 1080 poison into infant milk formula was sentenced to eight and a half years in prison. Well, the first thing I'd do is offer my congratulations to the police because it was a, a tremendously difficult um, case to actually solve. The second thing is just say that to how relieved we all are because the pressure here was that if he really carried this out, the, that's put enormous stress on uh, families, particularly mothers feeding um, babies in from the formula and, their, and the caregivers, uh, the risk that uh, that could even just so terribly. So it'll be a great relief to New Zealanders that this person is put behind bars. Uh, we don't, as a general rule, comment on people that uh, get sentenced, that's a matter for the courts. But what I would say is most New Zealanders, in fact I think all New Zealanders, would be appalled by this gentleman's behaviour. I mean to go out there for commercial and profiteering and gain, put out this sort of scaremongering campaign and, and at least argue that they're going to carry out the threats that could kill babies, is just despicable behaviour. And uh, I think New Zealanders will be quite pleased he's got the sentence he has. The New Zealand government owns the factory that imports and manufactures 1080 poison bait. The government agencies permit and spread the poison bait directly into community water supplies all across New Zealand. Many families living in rural communities are not aware that the government agencies are dropping 1080 poison bait directly into their water and profiting from doing so or that the agencies are not undertaking water testing that follows best practice guidelines set out by Landcare Research. Government agencies need to better inform the public about the aerial poison drops so that people can better manage their water for their families and animals. First and second drops we've got auxiliary water supply from this river pumping into our main tank. The last two drops we've had no water supplied at all, we've just been poisoned and then Suck it and see, basically. It's really simple. We've got a 21-month-old baby and a one that's due any day now. So that's what we want to find out. What are we facing? In 2007, over 200 of the world's foremost experts got together and the, gathered at the Faroes Islands for a international conference entitled uh, Fetal Programming and Developmental Toxicity. And basically they said, it was a wake-up call for regulatory bodies to look at those age groups which are most vulnerable to chemical and environmental exposures, um, which can actually affect them in those growing periods, the periods where there are critical windows of much harm being done in the womb, fetuses, embryos, um, newborns, and how an exposure here in this early time of life 
can lead to great harm and susceptibility to disease years or decades later. People claim that 1080 has been studied to death. Well, it's absolutely not true. It hasn't been studied to death. It's been, it's been very well studied in certain areas of its toxicology. But it's been very poorly studied in other areas. And some of these other areas are really important. And one of those is hormone disruption. We know that hormone disruptors can be effective in parts per trillion, way even below parts per billion. And one part per trillion would be the same as if you're making a gin and tonic. It'd be one drop of gin, and you'd have to then have 660 milk tankers full of tonic to dilute it to one part per trillion. And parts per trillion are enough to disrupt hormone systems. It would take 10,000 lakes the size of Taupo to dilute the annual drop of 1080 into New Zealand's forests to four parts per trillion. So where are the cancer-causing or carcinogenicity studies? There aren't any. Where are the uh, reproductive studies, particularly focusing on female eggs? There aren't any. Where are the developmental studies, early exposures to brain um, immune system, there aren't any. We are the long-term chronic exposure studies looking at mitochondrial DNA um, content and mutation rates, there aren't any. Uh, there's a lot of doubts about the substance. It's dangerous. In August 2016, New Zealand scientists discovered a possible connection between mitochondria DNA and disease. In the news item, it is stated that one theory about mitochondrial disease is that damaged mitochondria fail to supply enough energy to the cell so it can't work properly. But this latest finding suggests another possible culprit. Problems with the way the mitochondrial and nuclei DNA talk to each other, or fail to talk to each other. 1080 poison acts by blocking respiration within cell mitochondria, so it is harmful to a very broad range of organisms including bacteria, fungi, plants, nematodes, insects, birds and mammals. And the United States Environmental Protection Agency stated that toxic effects may possibly occur at concentrations too low to detect with any validated analytical methods. Interestingly, with the, the studies that have been done on hormone disruption of 1080, um, the one that's been used by the Ministry of Health to set the safety standard in New Zealand was one of these studies which was like going through Wellington Harbour with a net with a mesh size as big as a house because it only looked for gross morphological defects. Looking at the design of that experiment, I would conclude that it's not possible to come to any conclusion about the hormone disrupting capabilities of that toxin using that design because it's just fundamentally flawed. Now in fact the, the design that was used for that experiment I wouldn't even pass that research in an undergrad level of environmental studies at Victoria University because it just wouldn't stack up. In December 2008 the Ministry of Health released the following statement. Studies show that 1080 can cause fetal skeletal malformation, cardiomyopathy, damage to the heart muscle, and testicular effects, reduction in sperm count in animals. To date, there are no known epidemiological studies that have been carried out in relation to 1080 and potential adverse health effects on humans. In October 2016, a member of the public submitted a series of questions to the Environmental Protection Authority, formerly known as IRMA. The person asked if any epidemiology studies with regard to 1080 poison use had been undertaken. The EPA responded by saying, The Environmental Protection Authority is not aware of any epidemiology studies assessing 1080 and potential adverse health effects on humans that have been published. Since the Ministry of Health made their statement in 2008, and now the EPA in 2016, it is surprising that still no research has been undertaken into the chronic effects of 1080 poison exposure on people, yet more 1080 poison is being dropped into community water supplies all across New Zealand than ever before. When aerial operations are undertaken, it is common to find poisoned animal carcasses in streams, this can lead to an increase of E. coli and other pathogens as the carcasses decompose. Clause 11 on hunting permits issued by the Department of Conservation states that carcasses and offal must not be left near or in waterways. No one is required to remove the poisoned, toxic animal carcasses after the Department of Conservation and other agencies aerial poison drops and the toxic carcasses are left to decompose where they fall and often in water. Yeah, 
ini semua ya. And all the drops that take place around the country, and we see all the warning signs, there's absolutely no mention whatsoever about taking water out of the little streams. Now the track is just through there a few metres, and there's a lot of baits in this stream for instance. Now it's a heavy concentration, You're not, not only that, you've got dead rat there, and on every drop zone you have the odd dead possums, possible dead pig, dead deer, lying in the streams, and they could take months to rot away. I mean surely, people should be told about the, the possibilities of contamination in the streams. You know, they should have at least have a choice of whether they want to drink the water or not, but they're not even told. When councillors Graf and White met with the Waikato District Health Board's Medical Officers of Health in July, they raised the issue of poisoned carcasses in waterways and the increased risk from pathogens as the carcasses decompose. The Medical Officer of Health made the following comment in response. The presence of an increased number of animal carcasses may possibly lead to an increase in bacterial water contamination. Trampers and others who drink directly from streams should be aware that there is always a risk of bacterial contamination, whether or not there have been 1080 operations, and should treat water appropriately. The Medical Officer of Health also stated, While it is possible to alter these permissions to meet local conditions, it is my view that the Waikato operations do not have an increased risk associated with baits and carcasses in waterways compared with anywhere else in the country. Additional conditions are therefore not required. In August 2016, councillors Graf and White made a recommendation to Waikato Regional Council that the following words be added to poison signage within the region. Poison baits or animal carcasses may be present in waterways. The motion passed seven boats to two. Poisoning wild animals is now big business in New Zealand. Over $100 million is awarded to agencies every year to poison forests and waterways in an attempt to kill possums and other animals. Year after year, decade after decade, billions of dollars have been squandered. A variety of agencies and organisations have now boarded the gravy train, a gravy train built on fear, creative imagination and by misleading the public. Over half of New Zealand's forests have now been eerily poisoned with 1080. The money involved is too great to ignore, and so the poison drops continue. However, with open and honest public notifications, people will be better prepared to manage their collection of poison-free water. Please consider contacting your local district health board and request that it includes these simple disclosures in all public poison operation notifications. As a result of the aerial operation, 1080 poison bait will be dropped directly into waterways within the operational areas, and animal carcasses may be present in waterways for many months following the aerial application, and households within 3 kilometres of the drop boundaries may be entitled to water mitigation if they request it. The contact details for your local district health board can be found at this website. There are 20 DHBs across New Zealand. Dr J.C. Pollard has just released a scientific review of 1080 poison research named Aerial 1080 Poison in New Zealand, Reasons for Concern. This paper is the most up-to-date, scientifically accurate review of 1080 poison science since American scientists Dr Quinn and Pat Whiting O'Keefe undertook their review in 2009 and since the Environmental Risk Management Authority undertook its review in 2007. The paper can be viewed by following this link.